Hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome to a pretty exciting one uh, for me anyway in the sense of the solar um, you know the last video we did we're weighing up the costs of whether solar was viable uh, and justifiable if you like and um, I suppose this demonstrates uh, my view on that uh, so this sort of intro has been over maybe the last six to eight weeks um, so we um, have had over renewables out um, to make start doing the install and then we had a bit of a delay due to materials now a bit of background on why I've done all this work and really what you've seen is nothing to do with um, solar panels so my garage is a mess at the moment and before we bought this house it was used as a snooker room um, so I had a big snooker full-size snooker table in the middle garage doors were boarded up um, and yeah not my cup of tea um, but the end goal is to make this into my kind of dream garage um, and yeah I've got lots of plans for it but that's in the distant future um, so when we decided to do the solar um, I had to make a decision on kind of what I wanted to do with the garage and that's kind of what's driven this random neatness of a corner um, so what we've done is boarded out this corner um, up to where that film filler is uh, with fireboard now the reason for fireboard is recommended by over renewables who are doing the solar install um, solar panels kind of come with a risk of fire um, but there's mitigation measures um, so it's just belts and braces um, and then you'll see a hole here now the reason for that is we've moved this consumer unit from that wall to there put a bigger consumer unit in and then neatened up the alarm panel uh, the wi-fi extender that's also connected to the solar and then over renewables come in installed the inverter dc isolators ac isolator and a um, production meter and then a few other bits and bobs and then got battery now i'm going to touch on all that later on and i might even ask sam from over renewables to do a little piece explaining uh, a few bits and bobs about it so what you've seen so far is getting this area prepped ready um for uh, all the solar panels going in now excuse the roughness around the top edge the ceiling's either going to all come down and be renewed or just be skimmed so it's it's a very random concoction so it's been this last week um it has been a bit horrendous for me uh apologies if you see the eye and um i was ill earlier in the week and um an outcome was uh, was the eye so I'm a bit behind schedule and it's been non-stop since probably Tuesday and we're on Sunday now. Trying to get this done and ready because overall renewables are coming tomorrow. So we have the scaffolding up. That's been done. Um, we have approval from our local council um, because we live in a conservation area. Um, kind of approval that we don't need planning permission um, because of where we're having the panel. So what we'll do is um, I think do a bit of B-roll seeing the boys at work um which will be tomorrow and then um yeah we'll uh, see what they've got done and i'll show you what we're doing on the roof um and the reasons why why we've picked that location why we've picked that amount of uh, panels so yeah we'll touch on, on all this a bit further in the video so uh yeah exciting one let's skip to the install
and there we have it so 20 all black 400 watt pear light panels on the roof as you can see here we've got 12 um you can't quite see it but we do have bird protection on there um so we have 12 on this roof eight on the garage roof um so this roof is west facing as you can see the sun's absolutely beaming today um and it's done pretty much full five kilowatts since um about 11 o'clock this morning and it'll probably do this until about half past seven at night so a really good stint of production um, and then on the south facing roof we've got eight which is the maximum we could fit so 3.2 kilowatts on there 4.2 on here giving us a total of eight kilowatts feeding the five kilowatt inverter so i think they don't look bad considering the solar panels and they're not really a, a nice looking item but um yeah really pleased with them and how they turned off so what we're going to do now is i'm going to go and grab sam who's uh, grafting away in the garage and um let him explain kind of what we've gone for and the equipment we've got and some key benefits to that and how it'll help us utilize as much as possible so let's go and grab sam and uh, he'll talk it through better than what i can so let's go and get him and uh, see what he's got to say right so we can introduce sam from oval renewables who's kindly offered to sort of talk us through what we've got what we're installing and um really some simple uh, easy guide to the key features of, of what sort of equipment we've gone to so let's uh, go over to sam and uh, let him talk us through it hi everyone so yeah we've got this system here, so we've got the solar edge five kilowatt inverter. So the maximum this uh, solar edge inverter can kick out is five kilowatts. Um, however, we fitted uh, eight kilowatts of solar PV on the roof. So we've got uh, eight um, panels, 400 watt uh, panels on this roof, the garage roof here. And then we've got uh, the 12, the rest of the other 12 are on the house roof. All that power feeds down into this, uh, into these plugs here and uh, the inverter then decides whether or not to push that into the battery or push it into the house basically depending on what the uh, this little meter here is telling it so that that meter could be telling it that the house needs all of the energy that the soul's producing just to avoid the battery or it might say you need to top top uh, up what the soul's producing with some battery power uh, but the key thing is the maximum we can push out of this system is five kilowatt which is from this inverter here We've then got a series of isolators here, so garage roof isolation, house roof isolation, uh, main AC isolation for the, um, for, the, for the system. We've then got a generation meter showing what the system is producing. Um, we've then got the star of the show kind of thing. We've got the solar edge home battery. So this has, on paper, it's a 10 kilowatt hour battery, uh, but it's got 9.7 kilowatt hours of usable capacity. So that works by charging and discharging through this inverter here. So uh, any power that this receives or any power that this wants to give to the house all goes through this inverter. So this, this part, the inverter, is kind of a key, uh, key piece of equipment, really. Just one other little point, and uh, you might be asking yourselves sort of why have we gone for an 8 kilowatt peak solar panels, uh, off solar panels, if you like, um, but then only a 5 kilowatt inverter now. As you may know already, or those that follow over on Instagram, is that I do have a full electric car. We are looking to get a second full electric car. Um, so there's something called DC coupling, um, which I believe is sort of direct from the solar panels to the battery. So um, if you're all right, Sam, just to touch on that for us and uh, and talk us through kind of the principles principles behind it and and kind of the benefits to that yeah so uh, dc coupling basically just means that the battery is connected to the inverter via the dc side of the system so there are other systems called ac coupled which means that uh, effectively you have a circuit in your home consuming it for your solar and a circuit in your home consuming it for your battery and they work separately from each other this is a dc coupled system so the battery it works uh, works alongside is it imperative that it has this this uh, solar edge inverter it can't work without it um, the way that the way that that's a benefit in this case as rob said about uh, we've installed eight kilowatts of solar panels to this but we can only ever kick out five kilowatts so sometimes it's a little bit well why wouldn't you just fit five kilowatt panels the reason being that uh, during the mornings and the evenings when you're not going to be anywhere near peak anyway having those extra panels means that 
that there's more energy coming to this uh, inverter during those duller times. But let's say, okay, okay, Sam, uh, well, what about when you're producing uh, your maximum, when it's, you know, over the past few days, we have some really good sunshine, then there is a chance that um, you can lose generation uh, because you're capping it at five kilowatts, but the panels might have the capacity to send it, uh, send down eight. In that scenario, what we can do is if Rob's charging the car, let's say just for easy maths, uh, is charging the car at five kilowatts, then this inverter, if it's receiving eight from the panels, it can send five kilowatts straight into the house. So this, this inverter is then maxing out at five kilowatts, but the other three kilowatts can be sent directly into the battery at the same time. So then we're not losing uh, that energy. If we didn't have the battery, then that's called clipping. So what the system would be doing then is the inverter will be going, whoa, I can't handle eight. Uh, so the, the little optimizer on the back of each panel and the inverter uh, intelligently stop eight kilowatts coming down to the inverter. Uh, but when we've got the battery, it's almost like a, a heat sink kind of thing. It, it can let that extra three kilowatts go into the battery. So it can mean that you're actually um, charging a battery when the inverter is just pushing energy into the property. So then it means that actually installing more panels gives you, gives you the ability to push five kilowatts out into the house or six kilowatts, whatever size inverter you decide to get, um, but then allow the battery to charge up at the same time with that extra power that is coming from uh, the panels. And I think it's worth noting that um, the principle behind having uh, this system and, and all uh, sort of solar panels generally and the batteries, I want to use every drop of uh, electricity that we produce, if you like. So um, the idea with that is, and, and when me and Sam spoke prior to this, that and I found out about DC coupling or coupled, um, if you like, is that that's kind of nearly doubled my inverter size, um, you know, from what I thought was a five kilowatts maximum system to now eight kilowatts because it can just work in the background. So um, I just wanted to touch on that note because I think that's the idea is, um, uh, and another item that's not yet there is um, a hot water um, energy diverter, which will use our immersion heater. So again, you know, maximizing on the production to, to be self-consumption because the actual sending it back to the grid is, it's worth a little bit, but it's not as much as me using it. So um, just wanted to touch on that one. So thank you to Sam for explaining um, kind of the equipment. Um, he did it a lot better than I would. So uh, I'd just probably like to say thank you to Sam uh, Ollie and Dean who have uh, worked mega hard uh, and kind of not to my demands but um, kind of understood what I were after and produced kind of this array which is exactly what I wanted so a huge thank you to the team um, I'll pop the details down below because um, I'm quite keen to I know from my own experience how difficult it, it is how difficult it is to get good quality workmanship and people who are interested in what we're doing um, and the overall team actually uh, really are passionate about what we're doing. So I'll pop all their details down below. Um, currently, as this is filmed in um, August 22, Oval have actually stopped inquiries um, for the last sort of month or so um, just due to the demand. But I believe that's opening up very soon. So again, I'll probably pop a, a note down below uh, once those uh, the, the order book or inquiry book, if you like, uh, has reopened because I do highly recommend what they've done. Um, we are actually producing now uh, and we have been for about five days. So um, what I'll do probably in a future video, now we've covered kind of what we've got, the solar panels as well. Um, we'll I'll get my head around how it's working, how it's going to integrate with the car, how it's going to integrate with the hot water when we get it, um, and how the DC coupling works. Once I've got my head around that, I'll probably do a bit of an update video, hopefully maybe in a month or two's time, uh, seeing where we're at, what we've produced, what we've saved, hopefully, um, and then sort of the exporting as well. So we'll touch on that in another video. So yeah, hope this has been beneficial, kind of um, what we've picked why we've picked it and the aesthetics um, trying to keep it looking as good as possible uh, which is very difficult uh, considering uh, and given the nature of where we live as well um, sort of integrating it in a village environment so uh, I think we've done that pretty well 
so yeah well um i'll probably leave this video here please do give it a thumbs up and any questions drop them down below and um, talking to sam we may have an opportunity to do a bit of a q a you know live with with sam um, and maybe the team uh, to go through the questions that you might ha may have uh, and also check out my instagram the underscore diy underscore journey because i'm uh, posting quite a lot day to day on how we're doing with the uh, with the solar so yeah thank you for watching please do give it a thumbs up and please make sure you subscribe for more updates on the the solar and other jobs we're doing on this uh, house renovation we're running out of money fast so um yeah thank you for watching uh, really appreciate the uh, the support so thanks again and i'll catch you in the next one cheers